Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rambler Podcast. My name is Jimmy Smith, and I'm your host. Before we get into this episode of the podcast, I want to share with you all that we are just about almost uh, halfway through our 30-day challenge, Igniting Excellence. And today I have an update for you on the top five classes uh, with the most alumni participants who have given to the Fund for Excellence through this first week of the challenge. The top five classes are class of 1951 at 15.2%, the class of 1952 at 11.8%, the class of 1958 at 10.9%, the class of 1971 at 10.3%, and the class of 1966 at 10.2%. There's still time to make your gift to the Fund for Excellence and join in the 30-day challenge, Igniting Excellence. So do your part to represent your class and get your name, your class name, represented in the Salada Technology Center for the entire 2023-2024 school year. So please donate today at www.cathedralprep.com backslash give. So thanks so much again, and let's get into today's episode of the Rambler Podcast. Hi, everyone. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to episode number 25 of the Rambler Podcast, where we are passionate about sharing what makes Cathedral Prep the standard of excellence. On this episode of the podcast, we are thrilled to have Cathedral Prep seniors, and by the time this episode of the podcast comes out, brand new alumni of the school, Alexa Toyega and Hayden Hutchinson, on as guests for the podcast. This podcast is our third edition of our Info Session series, And today we want to talk to Alexa and Hayden about what their experience has been like for them in their time at prep and also has specifically this year for them as seniors and the new co-ed prep is gone for them. Um, Before we get started here, I want to mention too that Alexa next year is going to be attending the University of Kentucky and studying business marketing, while Hayden will be attending Villanova University and studying either economics or finance. Um, but either way, we're happy to have them on the podcast. Lexa and Hayden, welcome. Hi, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Very exciting year for you guys coming into this new building. Um, you know, senior year, always exciting in general. How, how's it been going? Like, how's it being a Cathedral Prep student nowadays? I'd say it's been really busy the last couple of weeks, uh, <laughs> for sure. Uh, we have a lot going on uh, tomorrow's sports day. So uh, Last couple of weeks have been just trying to get through everything with schoolwork itself, so yeah, you know, I get to enjoy the fun part. Right. I think it's been a really good year. People keep asking me like, "What's it like?" and all of that. And obviously, because we're new, well, I'm new here because of Villa, but I've been having like the best time ever. And especially as senior year is coming to an end, just being with my class and all together, we're having the most like the best time ever with all of our senior events coming up. Yeah. So yesterday was outreach day. Um, which I saw Alexa was on the Instagram live. That was pretty cool that we they're, they're the doing beach, that. Yeah. yeah. How did it go yesterday with Outreach Day? It was good. We My group went to Beach One, and we were there picking up the trash and everything and just cleaning up the beach a little bit. And it, once again, it was just a great time being with my classmates and also just helping the community out. Yeah. Yeah, I was with uh, I was at Beach One, too, with Alexa. So it was a great day. Like, it's nice to be with your friends, but also serving the community. So that's yeah. why prep is a good place to go to. I think they started outreach day when I was a student. I think it was like a sophomore the first year they did it. And I think coincidentally, mine was at the beach too. Oh, really? So it <laughs> gets to the popular spot we go yeah. to. Yeah. That's everyone, when the, when the list came out, everyone was like running to get to the beach. It yeah. just be like a common thing. We're like, I have to go to beach one. And it was a cold day yesterday too. It was like 40 yeah. something yeah. degrees. So. I know, that's eerie for you. We had 70s all week. Yeah. 40 for the beach. Too. Right, of course. <laughs> and then tomorrow, of course, sports day and all the fun senior stuff coming up for you guys, which we'll get into. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of start off the podcast also by talking about, you know, you both were freshmen when COVID happened, right? Um, can you talk to us about what it was like being a 14, 15 year old kid, um, and having that experience and the impact that happened for you guys? And we'll, we'll start with Alexa. So I remember it, we were fre- like freshmen, obviously, yeah. and the whole year was going great. And then as the year kind of started, March and everything, I remember about to be planning for semi or dance or yeah. dance that we always have every year and the world shut down so obviously we didn't have that and it was just a crazy experience like hearing about covid and, and the big impact and just how the world was shutting down and you have to quarantine and just have to be so safe and that brought up the questions of what school was going to look like mm. and all of that and that's when we started getting in like the emails by mr patooch and just what school was going to look like and if we're going to be online or how we've never seen anything like this before. Right. So 
what's going to happen, what's school going to be like. So that was kind of interesting and also kind of scary at the same time. But yeah. I think our school did the best job to navigate through it and also keep us in check and like updated and just kind of keep us safe and yeah. doing all the best they can at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with what she was saying. I mean, it was kind of like a surreal experience. I remember the, I'll never forget the first like time that it was kind of like became reality that we weren't going to be in school. It was like, I think it was Friday, March 13th, we were leaving school. And a kid said to Mr. Herbstreit, I'll see you in two weeks. Because that was the thing that was going around. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. said, see you on Monday. And then we never saw him the rest of the year. So it, was, <laughs> it was definitely... Uh, I remember that too. <laughs> Everyone was like, every, all the rumors are going around. Like, we're not going to be in school. We're not going to yeah. be in school. Yeah. And at that time, we were like so excited. Because obviously... But then once it really hit, like, right. you're not going to be in school, it was like, wait, what? Yeah, right. No, it was so weird. The first email I remember was like, yeah, you, we're just not going to do anything for two weeks. Hopefully we'll be back. And then like a week later, like, actually, we're just going to have to start doing online. <laughs> I think everybody kind of realized quickly. But yeah, I'll, I'll never forget like some of the things that happened. I mean, uh, it was also new for the teachers, which is something people forget. Like they had to navigate their way through it, too. I right. Remember Good I point. Father McCormick, first period. And we had to figure out how to do a team. He was the first teacher. I was like trying to figure out teams meetings. So it was like 6 o'clock on a random Tuesday. It wasn't even like during school or anything. He emailed a bunch of us like, hey, guys, can you try to get on? So eventually we figured it out. And, I mean, the rest of the school year, yeah, we never really came back that year. So Yeah, I give a lot of credit to the students but also the teachers. My mom's a teacher, so I mm. knew firsthand how much work. Like, it was so different for them being online. And they had to switch up their whole, yeah. like, how they teach. Right. We, again, we've never had this before. So I give a lot of credit to them. And our school did the best job they could. The technology we have made it so easy. Yeah. And I thought our school was, they did an like, incredible job to keep us learning, like still being safe at home, of course, but just to keep us learning. We had assignments. It was just like a regular school day, but at home. Yeah. Do you feel like it brought your class together and the school community together more? Or do you feel like it was tough because you're all not apart from each other? I mean, even doing social stuff, it was the first time this has ever happened, this pandemic, and you guys couldn't just go hang out with friends on the weekends and do that. Yeah, I think it was kind of hard, um, especially because freshman year for us, it was like a different experience. Like, you're kind of settling into your groups, like, as you get there. Yeah, but true. Then that's kind of when it hit. So, I mean, if you, like, then in the summer, it was, like, hard to kind of keep in touch with people. I mean, you had to talk to people who were online, too, because, like, how does this work? Yeah. And so, I think in some ways, it, like, maybe brought us together school-wise, but I think outside of school, it became really hard to, like, hang out with other people. So, I think... In the end, it took us a couple, maybe not years, but months to figure out right. what our class was like. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it brought, I mean, obviously it was hard freshman year, but I think it brought us closer as we went down the line, like sophomore mm -hmm. and junior year, because we appreciated being together that much more because right. we were all online, freshmen going into sophomore year. So the fact that start of junior year, we kind of like got to be back together somewhat, even yeah. with masks on it made us appreciate that. At least we're in the same building together and at least I could see my friends every right. day and just having face-to-face -face contact because I think everyone missed it. Yeah, that makes sense as you guys kind of got back together and you can now appreciate more so being in a classroom with friends and, and the hallway stuff and everything. It brings you together and what a crazy four years. So then COVID happens and then the announcement of this merger, <laughs> right? I mean, you guys are yeah. sophomores now in the fall when this big announcement was made. Um, so tell us about that. What was your perspective as sophomores at the school learning that, hey, now Hayden Prep is going to have girls and Alexa, your school at Villa is going to be, you know, essentially closed and brought over to Prep. Um, tell us about what that was like. So for me, I was obviously shocked at first. Yeah. I, it was shocking. But then, because I, I didn't know what it was going to be like exactly. So because at Villa, I've been there the last three years. My mom went there, my sister mm. went there. So it's just always been like a safe place and home. So I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this place is not gonna be here anymore. I'm going over to prep. So at first it was kind of shocking, but then I remember being at soccer practice and the, like, the news came out that we're merging and we were all at soccer practice talking about it and that's all we could talk about. And yeah. our coach was like, everyone stop right now. <laughs> like, please just focus on soccer. Like we couldn't stop talking about it. But then as like the days went by and like the weeks, I kind of got excited. I think change is good. Mm. And I got excited because I went to OLP with Hayden and yeah. a lot of these boys and girls. So I think it was a great opportunity to have the school come together. And it's been the best time since then. So mm. it was obviously scary and shocking at first. But from then, you kind of like realize what it could be and the opportunities that could come from it. And you realize that it's a great thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd say, like, I remember the the first time it, the announcement came out, I remember there was, like, an email that said, like, tonight there's going to be a big announcement. And so it was when we were still, like, hybrid school, so we, like, signed in. I remember the announcement came out, and we had, like, group chats with, like, different classes and stuff. Yeah. And, there, like, at first there was a lot of outrage, um, I remember. I mean, myself, too. I was kind of like, oh, man, like, what's this going to be like? Yeah, like, At first sure. we kind of started questioning everything. But as the days went on, I mean, the next day in I was online in a lot of classes, that's all we talked about. It was like with our teachers, there, they were like, well, what's right. going to happen with this and this? And they're like, we don't know. Like, <laughs> please stop asking questions. So eventually people grew tired of it. But I mean, as time went on, especially like with the, when they announced, they announced that night too, that like they're going to be doing the new building and everything. Yeah. I think that helped take off some of the steam. It's just sometimes hard when you also like, my grandpa went to prep and he was like, oh, like yeah. the brotherhood and everything. But in the end, I think people realized that it was for the better. Like you said, change is good. And sometimes necessary changes need to be made. So I think overall it turned out to be a great thing. But at first it was kind of hard. And I think last year when I came back to work for prep, uh, December 21, the building was under construction. And as, as I started to see that progress and I realized the resources that the students now have here, compared to when you do two separate campuses, you just can't provide the same resources versus all, all of us together. For sure. I can specifically say that coming from Villa, just a small thing, like, your rallies or just mm. being in a section. I know just as small as it is, but it means so much. I remember the first Prep McDowell game when there was um, like a rally crew and just being together and being for a g being together at a game and being in a section. It just, it was a new opportunity for us and all of us girls were like, oh my gosh, we've never done this before. Yeah. I'm a senior. I'm a senior and I'm graduating and I've never done that before. So it was just crazy and it was so fun to be with you guys. And just like that, a new, like, a lot of new opportunities and also the school like the new uh, building and stuff there's like esports now and there's so many additions with technology and sports and just mm. everything new uniforms all that there's just like so many more opportunities here yeah. together as one obviously it's sad in the past but i think necessary change is good yeah yeah i'd say that having more resources is great especially because a lot of times like in Erie itself, people like like to label prep as just like a sports school or like people only go there for sports. But in the end, like the merger has kind of showed that like what the students are capable of, like it's not mm. just sports, but also now our art programs. Yeah. And now a cool thing that I don't know if everyone knows this, but they do is like business path and like sure. there's classes for like law and stuff. We didn't have that before. Yeah. So being able to have those things really gives the students a chance to like progress in a way that they couldn't before. And so I think overall that just makes a, such a huge difference. Yeah, that's great. And Speaking to Alex, when Alex was talking about the first rally, so I was excited to go to the first rally. Like yes. I was excited to see what it was going to be like. And I'll never forget, I think it was Will McBriar. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, he was speaking up there. But the, he, he said he welcomed the girls from Villa now to be a part of the Cathedral Prep family and welcome to your first rally. And it just got this moment where I got chills of like in the moment of that's just so exciting to hear. It's a community came together and shout out to Will, you know, and, <laughs> and him just doing that because it really, you know, showed the maturity of how the students were handling all this. And it was great to hear you both talking about, yes, there was shock, maybe a little bit of outrage at first, but then as you look at it, as the time went on, the excitement around all the opportunities here, as well as coming together, you guys having to gone to OLP together, which I didn't know asking you both to be on the podcast, <laughs> that you both went to OLP too. So that was just coincidental, well, that's really cool. Um, so when each of you then look back, before we start talking about this year specifically, when you look back at your three years at, at Villa Alexa and, and your three years at prep when it was just all boys, what, what will stick out to you guys the most for your memories during that time? Because you guys are in a unique spot where you had three years of, of the single sex schools and then had the experience of the senior year. So what, what stuck out to you the most during those times? Um, I would just say the memories. I mean, I was there for three years and just as small as it, like walking through the hallway with the blue lockers or just all the girls there, just the sisterhood, and you could just feel walking through the hall, the alumni, the memories, just all like the history there. Yeah. And it's just the best, and it was just such a welcoming, comfortable place. And also, this sounds crazy, but Villa girls understand the Villa back patio on sports mm. day, on Mary's day, you all <laughs> go out there. But um, yeah, I'll always remember the sisterhood in Villa, yeah. and as a special place in my heart, I remember when my sister was going to high school there, I watched her go through it and I was in awe. So Villa definitely has a special place in my heart. Yeah, forever. that's great. I kind of agree. I'd say 
the thing that makes prep a special ed is is the people itself. Um, as we kind of were talking about before, like we've had to go through a lot of <laughs> interesting events. Like it was never really the same, no matter what. Last year we had the construction and we were hybrid and everything. So it could have been really hard if you had, didn't have like a good group of people to go go with. Yeah. But there's just like so many memories, like she said, with honestly the random things. Like it's the small exactly. things that I remember the most, sure. um, yeah. like gym class or like <laughs> random things happen like that. Whereas like sometimes people think of the big events, but I'd say. The thing that makes prep special is like the everyday, like things that happen. So I'd yeah. say those things, even when times were tough, they still were there, and that's what uh, I've, I'll remember about yeah. the three years before. That's awesome, and what an exciting time it was for you guys to be a part of this, you know, new legacy of the school and everything. So Alexa, when you came to prep, then that first week, I mean, was it intimidating? Like, did other girls talk about how scared they were? Like, it, you're going to this new place. Did you feel any of that? Um, I think it was more anticipation. Um, what's it going to be like? Yeah. All of this, what's it going to look like? New building, new uniforms, everything. And I wouldn't say I was intimidated, but just excited. And Because since you said, that we heard about the sophomore year. So the fact that on the first day of senior year, like it finally is here. It's been two years of talking about it. What's it going to look like? I'm going to be in class with boys. I just couldn't imagine it. So the fact that we could walk in the building and be like, oh, I'm having class with Aiden today. <laughs> yeah, right. It was, just, it, it was exciting for me, at least. Yeah. But I think a lot of the girls definitely didn't know what it was going to be like, kind of scared. But I think the teachers did a great job of having teachers from both campus be here, welcoming us. Uh, also just guiding us through the school because even the prep boys didn't know exactly where the classrooms were because right. this building went through a whole change. So <laughs> yeah. the fact that, not to throw you guys under the bus, but the fact that the boys also didn't kind of know yeah. where to go, it kind of helped. It kind of <laughs> helped the girls out too because we weren't the only ones. So we were just kind of yeah. going through it together. So it kind of made it more comfortable in coming here. Yeah, that makes sense. How about you? Same kind of question, but not intimidation about coming here, but more so how you felt during that coming to prep now with girls and also I like to point it out it was a new building yeah. right I mean it wasn't the same prep you were coming to yeah I mean I'd agree with her it's kind of like it was like a whole and like the anticipation of like we heard this two years ago and now like when's it going to come to yeah. fruition and I mean the, they were doing construction all of junior year so it's like oh this what's it going to look like when it's done and everything so the first day we came out like oh this is what it looks like um I mean, we kind of got delayed at the start of the year, so yeah. we started a little bit later. Um, right. But I think uh, it was just, I wasn't really intimidated or anything, but it was like, what's it going to be like? Like, mm -hmm. there was like, I think some worry from everybody that, um, like, if this doesn't turn out well, they're like, what's it going to look like? And yeah. what are people going to do? Are people going to be mean? But I think all students did a great job of like, trying to welcome everybody. I also credit the administration with like, doing certain activities in years prior. Like, we did sports day last year together, or sure. like, our retreats were mm -hmm. always together, so... We kind of had a famili familiarity with like each other's classes, so it wasn't like completely new, but still, the first day was just kind of like, oh, the, it's here, what's going to yeah. be like? So. A lot of build up leading up to it, you know, all the talks for how's it going, you know, every, people are still asking, right? Yes. That's why we're doing the podcast <laughs> yeah. episode, right? To talk about how's it going and, um, you know, the, the spring magazine for prep, you know, one of the main things, how's it going, right? Giving that update and um, if anybody's listening ha and hasn't heard Mr. Achilles episode of the podcast, I mean, he was teaching at prep for 40 plus years and uh, talks so highly of this year and, and committed to being here next year again because of how great it was. And he said, the girls have been way better than the boys, <laughs> and jokingly, but... I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but he was saying how, how well this school year has been and how much fun he's had all the time in, in terms of teaching and, and whatnot. I think that's been from everyone. Everyone keeps asking me, obviously, since coming from yeah. Villa, Villa What's it like and everything like that? And I just haven't had, I've said the best about it. I think it's been a great place to be and just walking through the hallways and seeing everyone. I think everyone, lo most, like, I think everyone loves it here. The events that Hayden was talking about, yeah. about together, I just think it's been a great year so far and I wouldn't say anything bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest compliment I could give it is, I mean, I think all people from prep now like that's the first question everybody gets asked when like small talks are like oh what's it like with right. girls now or what's it like going to prep so um but my response always is like it's pretty similar to what it was before and i think that's a big compliment to it like mm. um a lot of times people thought there'd be like a radical change but um every day here 
it's pretty it's pretty similar to what it was before, which I'd say is a good thing. Everybody enjoyed before, so the fact that it didn't change too much, right? I think that's the biggest thing you'd say about it. I'd yeah. say to go off that, I think uh, both of us have kept, or the boys and the girls, especially seniors, juniors, sophomores who have been at Villa and Prep campuses, that we've both tried very hard to keep the sisterhood and brotherhood alive mm. on our own, and how to find that to incorporate it together. Yeah. So the sisterhood that we were talking about, how special it was. You were talking about the brotherhood, and it's just history, but now it's finding ways to bring that together, and I think that this year we've done a great job of it. Yeah. The students, the administration, the staff, just everyone. I think all of us want to be here together, and that just shows going out like throughout the day. Right. And, uh, you know, when people ask me similar questions about, you know, what was your favorite memory from prep? And I never have a specific event or thing. It's always the brotherhood. It was the day-to-day -day stuff yeah. that, exactly. it's unpredictable. It's just the stuff that happens during the day. You but like, yeah, yeah, you really can't. Things. You just have to be here as a yeah. student. Yeah. And uh, you guys had that at Villa and now here at prep. And you've had that at prep the last four years now. And, um, yeah, it's just something you can't explain. It's that feeling you have. So I'm glad to hear that you guys have each taken the initiatives among your classes and everything to have that sisterhood continue, to have the brotherhood continued, but it's just a new way now that we're co-ed. Sure. Um, speaking specifically with maybe the new facility, the new building, what, what was your guys' first impression walking onto the campus for the first time, seeing the finished product? Is there special features that you guys have seen that you're like, wow, this is really cool in the new building? What do you guys have to say about that part of it? Um, when I first came onto the campus, I was amazed because we saw, I remember when the merger came, or the announcement came out, we saw like a 3D version of it or the video of like what it could look like. Yeah. And the fact that it actually looks like this, it was insane. Like I've never seen a high school before that looks like this. And I remember uh, going into my senior year, I visited colleges obviously, and just how modern they were. And then coming here and it gave that same aspect. It's very modern, but also has the history. It's just so new and just, it's, I was blown away by it. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely um, amazing just considering what the building was like before. I mean. Prep has always had good facilities, and like my grandpa went to the same cafeteria that I was in before, so yeah. like, that was an adjustment, like, <laughs> saying, like, oh, I've been, every, it's been here for this long, and, like, the school started in the cafeteria, everyone knows, so, but having, like, a new aspect to it without changing, like, the, like, integrity of it, I think, because that's something cool that I think they did was, like, kept a lot of the architecture from before, right. but still added a modern twist to it, so you still get the, like, prep that was before, but you also get the new part, and I'd say my favorite part about it is, like, all the resources for like the steam part of it. Mm. I think that's like such a huge thing because that's like the way the world's going kind of like engineering, like math, all the technology yeah. stuff. We have the laser engraver. I know that's a big thing here. So all those things that we'd never had before and with the new construction they were able to put in, I think that just makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I think that that sets that part of our building sets our schools, our school apart from others because the technology we have in the steam lab, that's my favorite place to be in. I have class with Mr. Body. I actually have two classes there a day. So I love being up there and it's just, it's, it seems new and it just, it's great. And it yeah. seems modernized and it also feels like that's what school should look like kind of like, mm. and I think that's what college is going to be. So it's just, again, it's preparing us and what Hayden said also, you walk throughout the school and you see the history like of the architecture yeah. here. So it's nice that they incorporated both. Right. Yeah, and one more thing I'd just add would uh, be the SLC is like the big like main thing. I think that like really has made a huge difference. I remember before like having events, it would always be at the event center and everything. Yeah. Now it, like semi was in the SLC mm -hmm. and like the President's Leadership Council, like all these new cool things that can be done at the, the school. The, the signing yes. day as well. Yeah. It's just awesome. There's so mm -hmm. many things that can be done at the school, which is such a huge difference compared to like having to go somewhere else. Right. So I think that's a big thing. We always joked about it, all the girls, that the SLC, if anybody knows, High School Musical, it kind of looks like that. <laughs> it kind of looks like that. And it's just, it's so nice that everybody can be together in a huge space. And there's just, it, I feel like being in the SLC just brings everyone closer together. Yeah. And it feels like you have people up top, below you, just everywhere. And it's just like, it's really comforting and it's also exciting just to like look around and see everyone. It felt like my first impression seeing you guys back in school was if we didn't, if we brought the girls over in the old building, it wouldn't have, it felt like it wouldn't have worked because it was an old building we're trying to fit you guys into and it just wouldn't have been as, um, I mean, it would have worked, we would have figured it out, but this whole SLC has just brought everyone together. Yeah, sure. yep. To where, I mean, I'm seeing teachers eating lunch with students, yeah. and they're right there, <laughs> the guidance suite right here, accessible for the students during the day. Um, 
I just felt like this whole space brought everything together with all the stuff you guys already listed. Um, but just a couple other questions for you guys as we'll start to wind down on the podcast with um, one of them being, you know, you're at a point now where you can kind of start reflecting now on your time at prep, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you got what? Sports day tomorrow. You have a retreat yeah. Monday. And then your last day of school is Tuesday. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, what teachers or coaches have been the most impactful for each of you during your time with prep and or Villa? Um, for me, I would say one of them being Miss Olegiri. Uh Like I said before, I think when I think of her, she came over here from Villa and I had her every single year at Villa. Mm. So the fact that she came over here with us, I remember us asking her last year, are you gonna come with us to prep? Like, please come with us. And she was like, I wouldn't miss it. Like, mm. I'm coming over the first year just to guide you guys along and be here for us as Villa students. And I just think that means the most to her as a person, but her as a teacher. Yeah. It just shows that she's always there for us. And when I think of her, I think of Villa and she just re represents the history there. And she has been the best teacher here. She's been the most comforting and she's also welcoming the boys very nicely. They all love her too. <laughs> um, but going along with that, I would also say Mr. Parsons. Mm. He is just, he has the best energy out of anyone that I ever know. Yeah. I walk through the halls and I see him. I don't even have class with him, but I walk through the halls and he's like, hey Alexa, how's your day? Oh, that's awesome. Just, you know him, yeah, just yeah, the yeah. biggest smile on his face. And I just think he represents what this new prep is about. He loves it so much. He loves all the students, and he's just, like, so excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, honestly, the biggest compliment I would give prep would be, like, the faculty administration they have because I honestly believe, like, every single teacher here cares about the students. Yeah. And so, like, if I reflect on my time, like, picking, like, one teacher that has like, made a difference is, like, incredibly yeah. hard. Um the easy answer would be Mr. Achille, just because everyone had him. Right. Everyone knows like what you go through um, with him. But um, as Alexa was saying, Mrs. Algeria as well. Like I had her this year, and I could see what why she would be like one of the favorites. Like she's mm. an amazing person in general, and yeah. she really helped us like adjust. But one thing that I'd like to add would be like the coach aspect, because um, I did soccer and tennis at prep, and Alexa's dad happens to be the coach for the soccer team. <laughs> but uh, <Yes>. yeah, <laughs> but they both were unbelievable, and I think. The coaches at the school and any extracurriculars in general, they like help instill the values that prep wants. Yeah. And I think um, both Coach Toyega and Coach Grab have really helped me like be a better person as well as a better athlete. So yeah, um, so awesome. Um, last question for you guys. I appreciate you sharing that all. Sorry, Alexa, didn't make you feel all emotional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's already been hit. It's fine. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's like these next few weeks, unbelievable. But so. We've talked about a lot of great stuff here, about your experiences and whatnot. What message would you guys like to give to the Prep and Villa alumni community about your experiences here and just what message would you like to impart to them and the supporters? I'd say the one message I'd like to give to everybody is like Prep now has a chance to do something like incredibly special. As we've talked about like throughout with the new building, the new resources, like that wouldn't be able to happen without the generous donors of the school, but now that it's here, the students can really take off and do something with it. And I think you're seeing that already in the first year, which is incredible because you have the adjustment period, of course, but people yeah. are already making a difference in the community. Yesterday was outreach day, but um, now with like the certain business path, I think we're going to see like a boom of like students going to great schools and everything. So I'd say like, while it may like, it looks great right now, I think this is just the start. So I'd say um, if like students who are contemplating going to prep, I'd say definitely for sure come here. Like it was one of the greatest experiences of my life and I wouldn't like change anything of it. So, yeah. um, and to the people that are alumni, um, just know that like everything that you had when you went here is still intact. Like we didn't lose mm. like something because it was a merger. And I think that's something that people were worried about. But as we said with the sister and the brotherhood, um, they're still here and we've actually come together in, in a better way. So I'd say um, just continue to support and it's a great place still. So. Awesome. To build off that, that was a lot. That was, <laughs> no, that was that was exactly what I was going to say. I would just say, to build off that, that we are both grateful for the experiences on both campuses. We've shared all this podcast, but the little memories that we've had on both campuses, the big memories, they all matter and they all are still in our hearts. And I know that about every Villa alumni, every prep alumni, that what we think and what we know about prep and villa it's still here and mm. it's still at this new prep it's just like hayden said it's just getting it's just moving forward to new opportunities and just a better 
a better chance for all of us to succeed yeah. as students and all of the resources that we have it's it's just incredible and i can't say better things about it and for all of the future students for all of the past this new prep is just a great place to be and i love it very much so <laughs> yeah well that's really great and um it's awesome to hear that your guys experience has been awesome i loved my time at prep i'm so proud of that and um, I have two sons, two daughters, so I look forward to them now both being <laughs> yeah. able to be there at Cathedral go. Prep in the future. You know what year that's going to be? It sounds <laughs> <laughs> they're, awesome. they're class of 2037, oh 2038, wow. 2039, and 2041. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm like, awesome. It's, it's encouraging for me even as a parent yeah. to hear about your guys' experience because as an alum, it's one thing. As a parent, to see your student, or your kids potentially going to school here, it's another. Um, but thank you guys for coming on the podcast, being able to share and reflect on this year and your past years with the school. Um, best of luck to you guys, you know, as you go on to universities and pursue your education there. Stay in touch with us, too, you know, and absolutely come back for follow alumni events. Yeah. yeah, we'll do a follow-up <laughs> podcast. Sure. Yeah, five well, you guys ago. let me know. Yeah, your five-year <laughs> yeah. reunion. Yeah, five-year reunion. You come back on as guests. We'll talk about what's college like now yeah, and everything. Yeah. So that'll be fun. But, no, thank you guys again thank for coming you. on the yeah, podcast today, us. and I uh, appreciate it.